Mandeham Shiguru Shiyata Paragamalam Shiguru and Vaishnavam Sya Shirupam Sagrajatam Saganaraganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shirana Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishikam Vitam Sya Oma Jnana Timuranda Sya Gyananshana Shalakaya Chakshurun militam yena tas my shigurabe nama Gorba beastam supurkam gurganara si shisam bushitam Chintya chintya samastaveda nipunam shirupa patanugam Govinda bidam ujwalam baratanum bhaktian vidam sundaram Bande vishwa gurunsha divyat bhagavat prem no ibija pradam Devum divyatanum suchanda bananam balarka chelanshitam Sandrananda Puram Sadekabaranam Vairagya Vidyambudim Sri Siddhanta Nidim Zubakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Baram Bandetam Shubaram Marekasharanam Yashi Swarashi Dharam Bansha Kalpatarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Paveni Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahamananyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gora Tabishe Nama. So we're hearing from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Translation and commentary by Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This is Madhyalila 22, the process of devotional service. Tabasmiti Vadan Vacha Tataiva Manasavidan. Tatstanam Ashritas Tanva Murate Sharanagata. One whose body is fully surrendered takes shelter of, at the holy place where Krishna had his pastimes and he prays to the Lord, My Lord, I am yours. Under this, with his understanding this, with his mind, he enjoys spiritual bliss. One whose body is fully surrendered takes shelter at the holy place where Krishna had his pastimes. And he prays to the Lord, My Lord, I am yours. Understanding this with his mind, he enjoys spiritual bliss. Sharana loya kore krishne atma samarpan krishna tare kore tat kale atmasam When a devotee thus fully surrenders unto, Lord, unto Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna accepts him as one of his confidential associates. When a devotee thus fully surrenders unto Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna accepts him as one of his confidential associates. Martyo yara tyakta samasta karma naivedi tatma vijikir shitome taramri tatvam pratipadyamano mayatma buyaya chakopatevai. The living entity who is subjected to birth and death attains immortality when he gives up all material activities dedicates his life to the execution of my order and acts according to my directions. In this way, he becomes fit to enjoy the spiritual bliss derived from exchanging loving mellows with me. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna was advising his most confidential servant Uddhava about, about Sambandha Bide and Prayojan. These concern one's relationship with the Supreme Personality of God and his activities of that relationship as well as the perfection of life. The Lord also described the characteristics of confidential devotees. Ebisharana Bhakti Lakman Shuna Sanatan Jahoite Pai Krishna Prema Mahadan my dear Sanatan, please now hear about the regulated principles for the execution of devotional service. By this process, one can attain the highest perfection of love of Godhead, which is the most desirable treasure. 
So here Mahaprabhu is mention, mentioning sadhana bhakti, the executing devotional service according to the directions of the spiritual master and the scriptures. <coughs> Kriti sadhya bhavit sadhya bhava sa sadhana bhida nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakatyam hridi sadhyata when transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained, when it is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti, or the regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service and practice. This verse is found in the Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu, because living entities are minute, atomic parts and parcels of the Lord, devotional service is already present within them in a dormant condition. Devotional service begins with shravanam kirtanam, hearing and chanting. When a, when a man is sleeping, he can be awakened by sound vibration. Therefore, every conditioned soul should be given a chance to hear the Hare Krishna mantra chanted by a pure devotee. One who hears the Hare Krishna mantra thus vibrated is awakened to spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness. In this way, one's mind gradually becomes purified. As stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam, when the mind is purified, the senses are also purified. Instead of using the senses for sense gratification, the awakened devotee employs the senses in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is a process by which dormant love for Krishna is, is awakened. So the, here what, what is being mentioned is sadhana bhakti, uh, how, how one engages in devotional service with, with the guidance from the scriptures and, and thus one is engaging in practicing. With, but this practicing also, as I've said, this is a natural condition of living entity. So it's not something that's being imposed upon one. It's actually there within one's heart. Shravanadi kriyatara swarupa lakan tatasta lakane upajaya primadan. The spiritual activities of hearing, chanting, remembering, and so forth are the natural characteristics of devotional service. The marginal characteristic is that it awakens pure love for Krishna. So here, what we're hearing is the words swarup lakan and tatasta. Swarup is describing the actual condition that exists or what is the practice. In this case, it's describing spiritual activities, hearing, chanting, remembering. Those are the, the swarup lakan. That the, means it's, those are the nature of the activities. And tatasta means what it does. So we have swarup and tatasta. And tatasta means that by this practice, one awakens to love of Godhead. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunoi Shravanari Shuddha Chite Koraye Udai. Pure love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of the living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love naturally awakens. So, as Mahaprabhu says in the first verse of the Sakshastika, that the practice of chanting and engaging in service, Chaito Dharpanam Marjanam Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, it cleanses, cleanses the mirror of the mind or the mirror of the heart and also it puts out the blazing fire of material existence, which is burning in the heart. Then what is actually there in the heart already, but covered over, can shine. That is love, uh, love for the Lord. Eta sarana bhakti duita prakar ek vaidi bhakti raganuga bhakti are. There are two processes of practical uh, 
devotional service. One is regulative devotional service, and the other is spontaneous devotional service. So these are two ways in which sadhana bhakti can be practiced, either through vaiti bhakti, which is all the rules and regulations, or raganuga bhakti. Um, one is regulative devotional service, and the other is spontaneous devotional service, raganuga bhakti. So. Actually, what Mahaprabhu is presented, presenting, what is the natural condition of the service of Radha and Krishna, that is um, more on the path, we can say, it will come with Raganuga Bhakti, whereas Vaidhi Bhakti is more c continuous in, in Vaikuntha, so many worshiping the Lord according to Aishwarya Gyan, so many rules, regulations, awe and reverence, all these things. But one cannot artificially say that one is on the platform of Raganuga Bhakti. One cannot, one cannot say that he, ha, he or she has spontaneous love for Krishna within their heart. That's, that's, the, that's what happens with the uh, devotees in Vrindavan. They, are, they have a spontaneous natural uh, attraction for the Lord, for Krishna. And that is also what Mahaprabhu is showing, this path of Raganuga Bhakti. But that is, as Srila Sridhar has explained, that's our ideal. That's, that's something that is, that we see as the, uh, the perfection of our service. But one cannot artificially just say that, that he is a Raganuga Bhakti. That is a, a very, that would make it very cheap. That's what the Sahajas will claim, that they're on that pat platform of spontaneous devotional service. But it is not so. First, one has to become purified before one can uh, actually understand or, or, or experience, better yet experienced, uh, spontaneous attraction for the Lord. Ragahin Janabhaji Shastra Agyai Vaidhi Bhakti, Bolitare, Sarva Shastri Gai. Those who have not attained the platform of spontaneous attachment in devotional service render devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master according to the regular principles mentioned in the revealed scriptures. According to the revealed scriptures, this kind of devotional service is called Vaidhi Bhakti. In the beginning, one has to hear from a bona fide spiritual master. This is favorable for advancing in devotional service. According to this process, one hears, chants, remembers, and engages in, devo in deity worship. According to this process, one hears, chants, remembers, and engages in deity worship, acting under the directions of the spiritual master. These are the essential primary activities of devotional service. Devotional service m must not be executed by for some material purpose. One should not even have a desire to merge into the absolute truth. One has to render such service out of love only. A haituki, a pradiyata. Devotional service must be without ulterior motives. Then material conditions cannot check it. Gradually one can rise to the platform of spontaneous loving service. A child is sent to school by force to receive an education, but when he gets a little taste of education at an advanced age, he automatically uh, participates and becomes a learned scholar. One cannot force a person to become a scholar, but sometimes force is used in the beginning. A child is forced to go to, go to school and read and write according to the instructions of his teacher. Such is the difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and spontaneous Bhakti. So it's saying, in the beginning, there may be some obligation. One may be forced to engage in, in regulative service, but there's no question of forcing someone to engage in Raga, Raganuga Bhakti. That comes when some spontaneous attraction for the Lord and love awakens in the heart. A dormant love for Krishna exists in everyone's heart, and it simply has to be awakened by the regular process of devotional service. One has to learn to use a, a typewriter. Now, this was written during the time when people used typewriters. Now, the 
similar thing they're using instead of typewriters, keyboards connected to computers. But one has to learn to use a typewriter by following the regulative principles of the typing book. One has to place his fingers on the keys in such a way in practice. But when one becomes adept, he can, he can type swiftly and correctly without even looking at the keys. Similarly, one has to follow the rules and regulations of devotional service as they are set down by the spiritual master. Then one can come to the point of spontaneous loving service. This love is already there within the heart of everyone, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. So in the beginning one has to practice. One's doing typing exercises and looking at the keyboard, the keys. But those who are those who become adept, they don't look at the keys. They can type a hundred words a minute without looking at any keys, just they know where every key is. And you can write things down much, much quicker than somebody can write by hand. One has to place one's fingers on the keys in such a way and practice, but when one becomes adept, he can type swiftly and correctly without even looking at the keys. Similarly, one has to follow the rules and regulations of devotional service as they are set down by the spiritual master. Then one can come to the point of spontaneous loving service. This love is already there within the heart of, every, of everyone, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem. Spontaneous service is not artificial. One simply has to come to that platform by rendering devotional service according to the regulative principles. Th thus, one has to practice hearing and chanting and following the other regulative principles by washing the temple, cleansing oneself, rising early in the morning, attend attending Mangal Arti, and so on. If one does not come to the platform of spontaneous service in the beginning, he must adopt regulative service according to the instructions of the spiritual master. This regulative service is called Vaidhi Bhakti. But the point is here, is mentioning that both Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti, they're two divisions of Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti means the practice of devotional service. Elsewhere, sometimes it's even described that Sadhana Bhakti is neophyte. For is on the, sometimes Sadhana Bhaktis are described as as neophytes. But here we would not say that Raganuga Bhakti is is that of a neophyte. But what is being mentioned is. Uh, there is sadhana bhakti, those who are practicing, and those who are parsha devotees, ad very advanced devotees who are associates of the Lord. Uh, so there's a comparison between those who are practicing and those who are eternal, eternally engaged in devotional service as associates of the Lord. So We will consider the Param Vaishnavas, like like um, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, for instance. It'll he would he can present himself as as a practitioner. He has said that when he talked to the devotees of Iskon, he said, "You are not the masters; you are all students." And then he said, "I am also a student." So he's presenting himself showing them by example, calling himself a student, that we all are engaged in sadhana bhakti. But actually his position, we're not, we're seeing that out of his humility, he can present himself as a practitioner, but actually we're worshiping our spiritual masters as associates of the Lord. They come here and they, they give us they give us devotional service, but they will never say that I am an eternal associate of the Lord. But we're seeing them that way. And I remember once I had this conversation with Srila Govinda Marsh because I was traveling from Kolkata to Nabadeep and I and I got a ride on I was waiting at the at the bus stop in Kol Kolkata and the ISKCON bus came by, so they gave me a, a ride on the bus to Krishna Nagar. And while, while I was on the bus, we were discussing 
about the qualities of the spiritual master. So I, I was saying, we are seeing our spiritual master is an eternal associate of the Lord as the most uh, highly elevated uh, devotee. And they were saying, well, we don't see our spiritual master like that. We see our spiritual master as, as maybe or as more advanced than ourselves, but not necessarily of that high stature of an eternal associate of the Lord. We see it as a person who is more advanced than ourselves and is helping us. So we had some discussion like that. And I was saying how the prayers of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the spiritual master, is seen this way, that he's you know, on, that, on the level of internal devotional service engaged in the spiritual world, the worship of Radha and Krishna, assisting Krishna and, the fair, loving, and his loving relations with, with the gopis of Vrindavan, etc. And so they, weren't, they were saying that we see how they saw their spiritual master, we could say, in a relative, relative way. And when I came, got, got back to the Mott in Navadeep, then I discussed this with Srila Govinda Maharaj. And then Srila Govinda Maharaj told me, Maharaj, you can't, you can't blame them for describing their condition in that way because it's the truth. They're just speaking to you what is the truth of the situation. It's not necessarily how we see the Param Vaishnavas, like Guru Maharaj, Govinda Maharaj, Prabhupada. We, we don't see them as someone who's a little more advanced than us, than help, but helping. We actually see that all they, though, like as I said, Srila Guru Maharaj may present himself that we are all students. I also consider myself to be a student. That's true. That's how he may present it. But actually, his internal level of Krishna consciousness, as we've heard from just speaking to him, his conversations, that he's on, an, he's on the level of being an asso eternal associate of the Lord. But so it, here we hear about two kinds of sadhana bhakti, vaidhi, vaidhi marg or vaidhi bhakti and raganuga bhakti. And, but they're both considered two, brand, two levels of sadhana bhakti. But there is also the stage of devotion of those who are eternal associates of the Lord, and they're called parsha devotees. That's, that's, a, that's another quality. But we, and, and practicing devotee, when, when one is highly elevated devotee, still it will appear that that person is, is, is a practicing devotee, a son in a bhakti, because he doesn't, a son in a bhakti, because he doesn't do anything that will violate the scriptures. That is his natural condition, because he has awakened spontaneous devotion for the Lord. Well, anyway, tasmad bharata sarvatma bhagavan hare ishvara shrotavya kirtitavyas cha smartavyas Chaitsha Bayam, O descendant of Bharata, O Maharaj Pariksit, the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is situated in everyone's heart as Paramatma, who is the Supreme Controller and who always removes the miseries of the living entities, must always be heard about from reliable sources and he must be glorified and remembered by one who wishes to become fearless. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. It is one's duty to understand the Supreme Personality of God through the hearing process. This is called Shrotavya. If one has heard properly about the Supreme Lord, his duty is to glorify the Lord and preach his glories. This is called Kirtitavya. When one hears about the Lord and glorifies him, it is natural to think of him. This is called Smartavya. All this must be carried out if one actually wants to be immune from fear. So it's Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. So Shravana, Kirtavya, and Smartavya. Hearing, then glorifying or speaking, and uh, remembering. Or, so, 
So yesterday when we were having a lecture or the Sunday program, there was a question somebody was talking about meditating and meditating in one's heart. But sometimes this is called that remembrance of the Lord. We will call meditation that it is shravanam, hearing, kirtanam, and, and glorifying the Lord, and then comes uh, smaranam, remembering. We can also call that meditation. I mean, that's what we would consider to be meditation. Mukha bahuru padibya purushasya shramasaha chatvaro jagire varna guna vipradaya pritak. From the mouth of Brahma, the Brahminical order has come into exi- has come into existence. Similarly, from his arms, the Chatriyas have come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come. And from his legs, the Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sannyas, combine to make human society complete. So, here it says, from the mouth of Brahma, but, okay, maybe that's in the purport that's being translated from the scriptures, but I don't see anything in this verse that mentions Brahma. It says, Mukha Bahuru Parebya, from Purushasya Shrama Shramai Saha. And then the mouth, the arms, Uru, the waist, Parebya, from the legs, Purushasya, of the Supreme Person, Ashramai, the different spiritual orders, with Chattvara, the, the four Jagire appeared, Varna, the social orders. So the, the spiritual orders, the social orders, Gunai were particular qualification, vip, vip, Vipradaya, Brahmins, etc., Pritak separately. Well, here, what I see is Purushasya. Purusha Shraim, let's see. Mukha Bahuru Parebya, Purusha Shya Shraima Saha, Chatvaro Jagire Varna Gunar Viprad Daya Pritak. It says from the mouth of Brahma, but in the verse it says Purusha Shya, from the Supreme Lord. So I've seen some places where this is said that these different orders are seen in relationship to the Virata Rupa or in, in, in the envisioning of, of the Lord. That's not an eternal form of the Lord, but still it is seen as the universal form. Anyway, I'll just read it the way it is. From the mouth of Brahma, the Brahminic order has come into existence. Similarly, from his arms, the Chetriyas have come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come, and from his legs, the Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprasa, and Sanyas, combine to make human society complete. Ya esham burusham shakshad atma prabhavam ishvaram nabhajanti abhajananti stanad brashta patantiyada If one simply maintains an official position and the four varnas and ashramas, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed up position into a hellish condition. If one simply maintains an official position in the four varnas and ashramas, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed up position into a hellish condition. So there you can ex- understand there's some, there's some, this is not the ultimate guide of society, the Varnashrama. I, many people, they'll talk about, oh, Varnashrama is essential to establish Varnashram Dharma. But 
All right, this is the spiritual orders and the social orders, are ashram, the Varnas, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and the ashramas, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyas. So that's based on qualities. But when Mahaprabhu was visiting the place of the Tattvavadis, or the followers of Madhvacharya in South India, he asked them that what was the process for spiritual advancement. And they spoke about performing one's duties according to one's position in the Varnashram Dharma system. And Mahaprabhu said, no, you're, this, is, this is external and you're trying to you're trying to flatter me because you know that I am a sannyasi. Sannyasi in that time means he's a Brahmin and he's a, in the highest social order, sannyas, because only Brahmins could take sannyas. So Mahaprabhu says, you're just trying to flatter me. That is not the real process of, devotion, of perfection. The real process of perfection in devotional service comes by shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu smaram. He said, this, we always hear about hearing and chanting and remembering the Lord. This is the process of, of devotional service, not some, it's not some uh, position. So here, previous verse said, from the mouth of Brahma, the Brahm, Brahminic order has come into existence similarly from his arms. The Chatriyas have come from his waist. The Vaishyas have come in from his legs. The Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprasa, and Sanyas, combine to make human society complete. But if one simply maintains an official position in the four Varnas and Ashramas, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed up position into a hellish condition. Puffed up position means his egoistic position into a hellish condition. So those four varnas and ashramas may be the natural uh, order of society, but they don't mean anything if one doesn't have, if one hasn't, um, if one is not engaged in worshiping the Lord, just to maintain some official position. Smartavya sadatam vishnur vishmartavyo jatuchit sarve vidi nisheda shur itayor eva kingara. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and, and uh, pro prohibitions mentioned in the Shastra should be the servants of these two principles. This verse is a quotation from the Padma Purana. There are many regulative principles in the Shastras and directions given by the spiritual master. These regulative principles should act as servants of the basic principle, that is one should always remember Krishna and never forget him. This is possible when one chants the Hare Krishna mantra. Therefore, one must strictly chant the Hare Krishna Ma mantra 24 hours daily. One must have other duties to perform under the direction of the spiritual master, but he must first abide by the spiritual master's order to chant a certain number of rounds. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu Smaran, remembering the Lord. So, I mean, we also are understanding that these purports are, are meant for getting across some essential points to the practitioner to be able to understand. Especially, you know, because the verse is smartavya sadatam vishnur vishmartavyo na jaduchit sarve vidi nisheda shur etayor eva kingara. So it says to be remembered sadatam always vishnu, Lord Vishnu, smartavya, to be forgotten, na, na, jadachit, at any time, sarve, all vidi nisheda, these, all these rules and, and regulations mentioned in vidi marg, shu, shu, should be, etayor, of these two principles, always to remember Krishna or Vishnu and never to forget him. And that they are meant for that. 
Now here it starts, Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. All right, we accept that, but it's not, that's not directly mentioned in the, in the Sanskrit verse. It just says that you should, the goal is to always remember the Lord. Whether you call him Krishna, Vishnu, I mean Prabhupada begins by saying Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. Because, because he's speaking to Westerners. He wants them to understand. Now what is the point of this verse? The point of this verse is that all the positive rules that you follow, you should do this and you should do that and you should do that, is to always remember Krishna. And all the rules that are mentioned, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this, is to keep you from not forgetting Krishna. So all the rules and regulations in Vidhi Marg especially are meant to always remember Krishna and not forget him. That's the point of this verse. Two things, to always remember the Lord and not forget him. That's what, the, that's what these rules and regulations are, not, are about. Sometimes people get confused. They just follow rules and regulations mechanically, but they don't understand that those rules that they're following are to help them remember Krishna and not forget him. Vidanga sadhana bhaktir bahuta Vidanga sadhana bhaktir bahuta vistar sankhepi kohiye kichu sadhananga sar I shall say something about the various practices of devotional service which is expanded in so many ways. I wish to speak briefly of the essential practices. So I'm, I'm reading this verse, this chapter about the process of devotional service which Mahaprabhu is speaking to Sanatana Goswami, and I'm reading purports and going, going slowly through this chapter because there's instructions that are very useful, and, and Prabhupada has directed those, uh, those instructions to, to devotees of all, of all levels, those devotees who, are, who don't know anything or are just beginning in Krishna consciousness and also those who are students. So sometimes the instructions are, are, are written out in a long way, they're detailed. I'm reading those because I feel that they're very useful. But, it's, but when I'm reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita, I'm, I'm trying to go through all the chapters sequentially so that one can hear the leela of Mahaprabhu and the principles given by the Acharyas about practicing devotional service. Now I remember previously I would hear some, I, sometimes I would go to class and somebody would read one verse in one day. And if there's 300 and some, 300 and some verses in a chapter, you could understand it would take them a long time to read through the chapters. And by the time you got to the end, you could not even remember what the chapter was about. Because they would go off each day just speaking for an hour on each verse. So he couldn't remember what was happening with Mahaprabhu. Where was he? What was he doing? What was he hearing? What was he speaking about? So I'm going a little slow in this chapter, but I'm also trying to draw out and say what, what is being said in the, in the verse. Anyway, I'll stop here. This is, today we have some other activities. Okay. <coughs> What happened? Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Can you give me some car toss? There they are, right there. Hanging on the side. You see the string hanging over the side? Oh, yeah, that's what I was about. No, not that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. These actually aren't mine, but anyway, these are, I think these are Parvat Maharaj's. Okay. I don't know, forget it. Hari Harai Nama Krishna Janavaya Nama. Yeah. 
ಜಾನವಾಯ ಮಾನವಾಯ ಕೇಶವಾಯ ನಮ ಗೋವಿಂದ ರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಧುಸುರ ಗಿರಿಡಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿನಾಗ ಮಾರನಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜನಾಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಗರನಾರ ಶಿವ ಸರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಜಾಯ ರೂಪ ಸನತ ಭಕ್ತ ರಘುನ ಶ್ರೀ ಜೀವ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಭತ ದಾಸ ರಾಘುನ ಗೌರಿ ಚಾನನ ಬಂದ ಜಾ ವಿಘ್ನ ಸಾಪುರ ಸಭಾರೇನು ಮೋರ ಪಂಚಗ್ರಾಚಾರಾನ ಸೈವಿ ಬಾಕ್ಸ ಸನೆ ಬಾನಮೇ ಜನಮೆ ಮೋರೆ ಆಭಿಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲ ಗೌರಿ ಪರಿಕರ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಗುರಂಗ ಗನ್ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ ಗಿರಿ ಡಾರಿ ಜೂ ಕಿ ಜಾ ಜಾಯ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ್ ಪರಮಂಸ ಪರ್ವ ಜಾಕಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟಾರ ಸರ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ 
भक्ति सुन रहे गोविंद देव गोसाई महाराज की जाए चाहे ओम विष्णु पान परमस पर्व जाक चार तार सारे श्री श्रीमान शिला भक्ति रखक श्री रेव गोस्वाई महाराज की जाए चाहे भगवान शिला भक्ति सुदान्त सारस्वती गोस्वाई ठाकुर की जाए चाहे ओम विष्णु पान श्रील गौर किशोर दस बाबा जी महाराज की जाए चाहे ओम विष्णु पान श्रील सात भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाए चाहे ओम विष्णु पान वैष्णव सार्वभौम शिल जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जाए रूपनुग गुरु वर्ग की जाए नामचारी शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए श्री रूप सनातन भक्त रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल बदास रघुनाथ सद गो स्वामी प्रभु की जाए प्रेम सिंह गो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदान हर श्री वासुदी श्री घोर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्रील कृष्णदास कबीरास को स्वामी प्रभु की जय श्री चैतन्य चारितामृत की जय श्रील वृंदावन दास ठाकुर की जय श्री चैतन्य भागवत की जय नारथम श्रीनिवास श्यामानंद प्रभु की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद विश्वाभरण्य शिल भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रभापाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद शिल भक्ति निर्मो आचार्य महाराज की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय श्री नवदीप धाम की जय श्री राम मायापुर की जय सपर्षद श्री नित्यानंद प्रभु की जय सपर्षद श्री महाप्रभु की जय श्री कोलद्वीप की जय श्री चैतन्य सारस्वत मत की जय सोकेल श्री चैतन्य सारस्वत सेवाश्रम की जय श्री श्री चैतन्य सारस्वत माधाचार्य वृंद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय ऑल दी असेंबल द बोटीज की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपी गोवर्धन श्याम खुन राधा कुंड कलंदी अमुन जो की जय सम वेद भक्त वृंद की जय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय गौर प्रमानंद हरि हरि बोल हरि बोल श्री लोकपति पावन जनार्दन महाराज